Okay, well, I, I'm wearing this here shirt because I, I, I'm symbolizing that this is the gear in the inner city, that this is what we wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and let's be for real about it. Right. This is if you're wearing basic urban gear in New York City as a law enforcement officer, you can get killed, and we know that. I mean, that's not something we don't know. You can. We can't run in our neighborhood. If I wear a sweatshirt in my neighborhood, I'm looked at as a hood. We all know that. The police wear sweatshirts in our neighborhood, and, and they don't live here, they come from another neighborhood. White officers come in our neighborhood with a sweatshirt with their gun hanging out. Hanging out, and no badge showing. No either. badge showing anything. We already know this, this has been going on for the chance of time. We know you're not supposed to have your gun displayed if you're not in uniform. They do it, uh -huh. we know it. All officers know it. But now, what do you say to the community when you have someone that might say, but this man was running down the block with a gun? A seasoned officer, do you agree am I wrong when I say it? But a seasoned officer realized, wait a minute, if I run down the block, I know that white police is going to shoot me. And again, I'll say condolences to the family, but wait a minute, you don't run down the block. Have you ever ran down the block with your gun in your hand? Yes, I have. Really? Yes, and I afterwards, have. you thought about it. Do you had to think about it? Like, I've been in situations where crime is being committed, and me and my nephew, and he's captain in, in correction also, and we're sitting in the car, and there's a shootout on Troop and Willoughby. And we all have these stories, a shootout, two guys shooting from over there against one guy on the other side of the block. Now, we're sitting in the car. We both law enforcement, both have guns on us. Cop car back there two cars away. And wait a minute, I know if I get out this car and consider myself trying to do my help out in the community, I'm going to get killed. Now, I couldn't go forward because we was going into the line of fire, and I couldn't reverse because we was at the light. The cops came up there, and in all fairness, see, we do a lot of criticizing. When do we speak on the positives? So now the cops came, eased up on the corner, and this was mm -hmm. April 20th, 2001. It was my mother's birthday, and I'll never forget it. It might have been 2000 or 2001. April 20th. They pulled up on the side, and they caught both of these gentlemen, and they're not gentlemen. They're just thugs just taking over our community. And they say what could have been a little kid shot. We've had too many shootings and all type of stuff in mm -hmm. our community. When is it enough? When do we stop bashing the cops and say, guess what? If the stuff wasn't going on in our community, we would they, they wouldn't be there. Wouldn't be there. When is we, we gonna be truthful and say, you know what, white people look at us like we're crazy. When we stand up in here and we continue to beef about police brutality, the police is doing this, the police is doing that. A couple of people got shot. It was on 11 o'clock news last night, last three night. people. People are getting killed in our neighborhood and we don't say nothing. So when do we say, well, wait a minute, there's a few people that get checks and all type of stuff and keep perpetuating these images of they shot somebody, they shot the police did. When do we stop and they say, listen, if we have better images of what we're doing, positive images, about to, uh, stop having young kids shooting up each other and to check these kids. They're outside selling drugs. And we know and we had a conversation off mic. We'll go film the police and we'll do all type of stuff, but we don't go mess with them drug dealers that's out there. So there's a lot of stuff going on in our community. So what is the police to do? There's a man running down the block with a gun. I don't know who he is, because I didn't get the whole Sprint 911 report when I was driving down the block. So I don't know who he is. All I know is there's a man running down the block with a gun. He might shoot that man he's chasing. He might shoot the little kid. He might shoot the lady in the chair. When do we stop this? When do we stop making everything the police the police? The same thing I said in the previous show, we had, me and you called it. All we do is blame the police. We don't talk about the good things they do. And we don't bring this here real issue to our community. We're the problem. And until we do certain things like control our own media to tell our own story, get your cameras in, show positive images, well, we allow white folks to treat us like this here. So if you don't know that you can't run down a block with a gun in your hand, if you don't know that the police have stopped you, and as I said, and I, we talked off mic and we talked in, I can leave out here saying the police is doing a good job and go right to the corner of Nostrand and Fulton and get whipped out. It's very possible. As long as you're black and you dress like this on any given day. But what do them white men supposed to do when the reality is, guess what? Every time they lock somebody up, most of the time if you go on Rackers Island, they look like this. But you see, this is where we can put ourselves in a bad position. Every black person living in Bed-Stuy mm -hmm. is not selling drugs. Exactly. 
They're not gangbangers. They're not on welfare. They're not doing one negative thing or the other. We have all kinds of people living in this community. Without a doubt. Right? The police officer's job is that of service, not of control. That's the first thing, and they don't teach that in the academy anymore. You're there to serve, not, not just protect. You're there to serve. You are a hired hand on this ranch. You're not running the ranch, okay? And the assumption, see, you cannot make an assumption. That's why the use of deadly force, deadly physical force, has is very be, critical. Has to be matched with right? deadly physical force. The first thing they'll tell you is a cop has to make a split-second decision. That's no cotton-picking excuse for killing the wrong person. Okay? It's no excuse. It is no excuse. I've been in those situations. I've been in situations where people were armed, the gun was cocked, the gun was in their hand, the gun was stolen from a state trooper. The guy is there standing with the gun cocked. My gun isn't even out of my holster yet. All right? But you know what? We took that guy without firing a shot. I've been in other. I've been in bank robberies where the bank robbers recognized me. I've been in numerous situations, and I've been shot at. I was being shot at by white people in East New York because they didn't want black people in certain parts of East New York when I was growing up. All right. I've been in all kinds of situations, but the fact of the matter is, you pull that trigger as a last resort, and the police officer has to make an assessment whether he has a second or 25 minutes to make an assessment. Assessment. That's what a police officer is supposed to do. And a lot of these young fellas out here, they're not assessing the situation. But, 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 Everybody, I got something for you. Didn't they fail Didn't they fail when they was in the academy, when you had that shoot, don't shoot? They didn't do that well there. In the fax machine. Yes. Right. You didn't do that. Let's be for real. I mean, these are things that as people working in law enforcement, we understand. But fear. You, you, but, 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 and, and fear wasn't even there. But when you went in that chamber, you shot the little baby. You shot everybody else. So you didn't do that great. You was average as a shooter and everything else. <laughs> so now when you get into the street, you fail. Yeah, I mean, overall, you got a 65. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, you got 65 or 70, but the reality is when you went through that training and you understand what I'm talking about, how many times did you fail? How many times when one of them things popped up, that was the innocent little kid, fail. What? That was the lady in the wheelchair. Fail. Don't even mention when you got shot. Thank when you. How many times you got you. shot? But you, now, you know? in these situations, do we ever talk about when you got that call? Was your hand shaking? Well, the, let was me your hand shaking? I, my first response. Uh huh. When I was a rookie, I was on a job maybe a week. I went to a ten thirteen. I could hear a woman screaming. Ah! All this horrific. And I you, mean, the and you riding up on that scene. And, I, and I'm, I'm coming around. With my weapon, I had my, I broke it from the holster. But don't you, it was no I, John Wayne stuff, though, was it? No, None of that no. stuff you see on TV. And I, I, I get that. I said, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. Th these guys are fighting. Put the gun, because, you know, a gun in your hand limits you. Mm -hmm. And this is another problem with these cops out here. They can't use their hands, you know. Mm -hmm. They can't. They can't do this. <laughs> right. They don't know how to that's do a, that. That's a different story, man. Right. That's a, you stand on Notion <laughs> Avenue. That's a different you story. Stand on Notion yeah. Avenue. They see when I came on the job 35, <laughs> 36 years ago, there was a height requirement. Mm -hmm. That's a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry for y'all out there that are five feet, five feet, five foot one. Sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not about being politically correct. They said it's EEO okay? now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they want to call it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But. You got people out there that are deathly afraid. You have, you have white people out on these corners that have never seen or interacted with a black person until they got into police academy. All right? And the only thing they know is what they see on that screen, whether it's BET and that stupid trash they got or whatever sh or shows they were watching. So they are scared. A lot of these cops are deathly afraid of black people. They're xenophobic and they got racist m a mentality. And the attitude is, I'd rather be I'd rather tried be tried by six than carried by, by twelve. Tried by twelve than carried by, by six. Tried by twelve. Twelve carried by six. Wrong mentality. Six. Of course, but we know that. Oh. But we know that. We know that. But now, part of knowing all of that, we still have an issue here, though. We know it is law enforcement, but we can't always be Monday morning quarterbacks. My issue is, when I keep hearing we get all type of shows, everybody's riled up. Come on, are we doing disservice to our community when we rile up the community, when the police shoot us and say nothing, when nobody, when uh, we do it to each other? We gonna come right back 
after this brief message from our sponsors, this will get you killed, though, as an officer. If you walk outside and you chase somebody, you'll get killed. Especially if you're in L.A. And Urban Gill. We'll be right back.